Welcome to Dunwoody College of Technology, Mechanical Engineering, Thermodynamics. This is a solution to quiz one from fall of 2019. So we have a piston cylinder assembly with some gas in it. And we're looking at a vertical shaft where there's a force applied to the tip of that shaft that is going to keep this thing in equilibrium, in, in mechanical equilibrium. So we also know the masses of the, the piston and the shaft. We have 24.5 kilograms for the piston and half a kilogram for the shaft. We know the diameter of the piston, it's 10 centimeters, and the local air pressure is so one bar, and our gravity is standard earth gravity. Oh, our standard earth gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, so what do we have? We have known. Let's think through what we, ha what we have first of all before we start the, the process. So inside we have some pressure acting on this that's going all directions. It's going on the sidewalls, it's going on the bottom, it's going on the top. And then outside of this we have some atmospheric pressure. It's acting on the top of the piston, it's acting on the sides of this thing. And if we look only at the piston itself, we have the weight of the piston down, we have P in acting up on that and on the outside we have P atmosphere acting as well as this F. So if we do a force summation on the piston itself we can solve what force is required to keep that in equilibrium and we'll, we'll work from there. So we'll start with our knowns. So what do we know? We have a piston cylinder assembly. With internal pressure. We're looking for the force on the shaft to maintain equilibrium. Given in schematic, so we have P in, it's three bar, P atmosphere, one bar, mass, piston and shaft, twenty five kilograms. We know the diameter is ten centimeters. I'm going to convert that to meters right here. And anything else that we need to know? Does this area matter? Not really. The area of the shaft itself, if I wanted to know what the stress or something in that shaft was, that would matter. But right now, that doesn't come into play for this force. All right, so I think that's all of our knowns, our little, our givens. I can resketch this thing so I've got a piston hanging out here, I've got some force, I've got P atmosphere acting down all over the place, I have P in is 3 bar, and I know that diameter is 10 centimeters. Alright, so now we're ready to get to work and do um, some modeling. So first of our, our engineering model or assumptions. first assumption is this is a closed system. Seems like a decent assu ass assumption. Two, I'll assume that the piston moves freely. This is not some weird frictional force or something that's holding it in this position in addition to the force that's applied there. Alright, so now for the analysis portion. Our actual calculations. Here we go. So looking at that mass, the force balance I had on the going down, I had negative 
w and I had minus p out times a minus f that offsets p in times that area. That has to be in equilibrium, so we're going to set that equal to zero. Another way I could have written this was the down terms on one side and the up terms on the other. So if I solve this for f, f is going to be p in times that area minus p out times the area minus the weight. These areas are the same. I know the pressures. So I'm going to have the area come out at p in minus p out minus my weight. So now I can start filling in some values. The area is pi r squared p in minus p out. It's going to be 2 bar. My weight is 25 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. So what do we have here? We have pi 0 0.05 meters squared. 2 bar is 200,000 newtons per meter squared. So my meters squared will cancel. I get m newtons on that side. That's good. Minus this thing. I'll just carry that through for the time being. I'll get newtons there. So newtons plus or minus newtons equals newtons. Everything is checking out. Filling in values, I find that this first term is 1570. 0.796 newtons. The weight of the piston and shaft is 245.25 newtons. So the net difference between those two is 1,325.55 newtons. To three significant figures, what do we get? 1.33 kilonewtons. And there we have it. So we need about 1,300 kilonewton, uh, 1,300 newtons pushing down to keep that piston at that location. Second problem here. We have a similar piston cylinder assembly, and this one's now undergoing a cycle, so a series of processes that get us back to the beginning. State one, our pressure is one bar, our volume is two bar, and here's the description of our processes. So first we have PV equals constant. That tells us it's a polytropic process. Our endpoint volume is 0.3 meters cubed and a change in internal energy is 10 kilojoules. From 2 to 3 we have a constant volume process and we're going to just change pressure. And then from 3 to 1 we have constant pressure and adiabatic. We don't have any change in kinetic energy or potential energy, so those are both zero. All right, so now what are we asked for? We're asked for a sketch of the cycle on a PV diagram, talk about whether or not the process matters for finding the work done by the system, and last, what the value of our heat is from three to one. All right. So A, we have a PV diagram. We're going to start it out with V1 was 2 meters cubed, V2 0 0.3 meters cubed. We started out with some pressure. I don't know that we're told what the pressure was. Yes, it was one bar. We know this is compression, so we're going to have higher pressure, lower volume. And it's polytropic, so it's going to be some kind of curve here. Start it at state 1. Go up this curve to state 2. This is P2. There's V2. 
Now we have a constant volume process. So constant volume means we're just going to go vertically up and down this line until we get back to one bar where P3 and P1 are equal. So here's, oh, here's state three, that location. Now we have constant pressure. So we're going along a horizontal line. Oh, my three keeps wanting to disappear. So we're going to go this way until we get back to state one. So there's part A, our, our sketch of our cycle on a PV diagram. Now part B, does this process matter? Well, we went from one to two with this polytropic curve. If n was a bigger number, we'd get more and more of this curve. It would be closer to this. If it was a, if n was essentially zero, we'd kind of have two pieces to this. We'd eventually have a kind of a rectangular way to get to that. So does it matter how I get from one to two to find the work? Recall that work is the area under this curve, so absolutely it matters. Area under PV curve is our work. So process matters. That's all I was looking for with that one. And then last from three to one since adiabatic means we have no heat transfer Q equals zero. Just testing that you knew adiabatic and what that means that Q is zero. So that's the end of the solution to quiz one for mechanical engineering thermodynamics fall 2019 at Dunwoody College of Technology.